All right, here we go. Welcome to game two. Weibo found their openings. They took their shots. We know that they're going to take their shots. Billy, Billy, if you're the coaching staff, you're going to talk about adjustments. What would you like to see differently done? We don't need to take that fight for a meaningless dragon. Let them have D1. It's no big deal. Go and continue scaling. We did see them adjust and take it back later. They said, okay, you guys can go take. We'll take off of the Rift Herald, for example. They take Rift Herald, they push it here, they take a whole turret and half of this one, and the response is a turret here and a turret here. Just a huge net win for Billy Billy. And that's the sort of take that you want, right? If you can get one turret for a dragon as a scaling team, you're happy. If you can get two, you're ecstatic. So I'm looking for Billy Billy to improve that, saying we don't need to take the fights, especially in a team like this. Like, look at this. This is Elise. This is pre-buff Elise, by the way, guys. She is not the strongest champion in the world. Uh, Engager. Early game. Early game. Support for this doesn't really matter extreme early game champs they must be saying hey we've either got something in you know an exploitative plan for level one where we can do some dives with elise elise is the premier ch uh, diving champion in the whole game hold on they engage on light are they gonna get first blood here knight flashing forward actually gets him out of trouble and repositions him in the fight which means now that they have this level one fight they're going to continue only thing for Syndra is that she doesn't get to stack up because she doesn't have two spells. She, Even though she's hit probably eight Qs in that fight. I don't know if it was eight. But being in that fight for that long, because you can't get a second spell off, it means that she does not get the extra stacks. Uh, Flash Ignite down. Flash from Syndra. We have a smite from Skarner to take that. And this early game team is now really far behind. Looks like they were going for exploitative raptor take, but they're surrounded this whole time. That was the call. Lucian's out of position. We can go take the rest. Skarner's super strong here. Not scared about the rest of the fight. Well, this is great. This is exploitation and answer, right? So if... When we talk about Game Theory Optimal, right? So let's talk about this for a second. You have a best strategy. Let's say there's a best strategy. We'll, we'll just call that strategy A. And it beats all of the other strategies. A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever it is. We've decided that strategy A is good. Well, if we can go further down and do something that would normally be called suboptimal. Hold on, we'll watch the, we'll watch the dive here. Speaking of optimizations. Elise dropping the aggro, jumping up, level 3, she's huge. They do get the kill on on, but not before he gets the rest. So they trade one for one. This is, again, a huge one for BLG. Jahu's wondering whether or not he needs to jump into this fight. Finn is just so good in these situations. Unflappable. So when you have a strategy that you've deemed to be the best strat, and it beats everything else, let's say it's Jax on, you know, been on Jax in a flanking position, and it beats everything, then the correct answer needs to be find something that was not on this tier list of ABCD, like the, the ways to play the game optimally. Instead, you go for strategy Z. And Z loses to B, C, and D, but it beats A. Right? Like, that's, that's the nature of these exploitative strategies. They tend to have something fundamentally flawed with them, but if they beat the presumptive approach from your opponents then you might be able to exploit them now if you're able to flex and say you know what we have a but we also have aa we have ab and we have ac because we know that there's actually three different counters to our strategy and we have responses to all of them you see this in football football is much easier to script because of the nature of a play call and a you know motion pre-snap uh in the fight for a second there we go Skarner showing his early game strength it is it's much more uh what's the word i'm looking for you're able to predict and and work on things in a small scale because everything's done in a six second window you play for six seconds at, at a time soccer basketball league of legends much more open-ended where you're going to have many more many more options available to you 
and it's constant motion. So having a main strategy and having adaptations, a lot of teams like to just adapt on the fly and rely on a shot caller. But if you have especially exploitative strategies, you need to start thinking about what are the answers. And really you're looking at the first six minutes of the game. Largely scripted. I mean, some teams try to script all the way up to 14 minutes, all the way up to Rift Herald. That seems pretty hard because there's so many adaptations, but a good core to start at is what are you doing in the first six minutes? Where do you want to be once the fortifications drop off the turret? Who do you want money on? Where do you want to try to take a kill, right? Like, who are you trying to peg down? Who are you trying to peg up? All of these elements are, are things that these teams can be working on. And these coaches, again, I love seeing the coach cam. I see how energized they are and how, how amped they are about the result. You cannot, if you want to be good at your job, you cannot be riding the emotions of the game. Watch this fight. Weibo saying we're taking all fights at all times. We're never going to stop. Even if you lose, it's only going to get worse. So we're just going to continue fighting. This is Team Liquid style, right? Like, come up. We know what the best early play is. We're going to go for the most damage early. We're going to continue taking, continue taking, continue taking. And BLG actually is lured into the trap. They say that maybe the best answer is to, like, fight back some amount, but they end up getting beat in this spot. It'll be interesting to see whether or not they even made the right call to be in this spot. Hold on. We got even more. The least taking the maximum. They're saying, hey, we want to do everything. Dude, these LPL teams are going to be scary with the new Elise. I don't think that she'll stay in her current form. She's already been nerfed once, probably going to get nerfed again. I don't know that she'll survive to, to pro metas. She's an exciting champion. I wish we could see more of her, but but it, she has so many tools because of the six spells at level three that she sort of has that XYZ adaptability at all times. Did I just see a demolish from Crisp? That would be wild to me. Because Font, Font of Life is such a good tool for actually getting yourself advantages. It looks like they're relying, and maybe they thought that they could get somewhere based on... I'll, I'll tell you why they do it. If they go demolish, it's 100% because they expect to be left alone in lane, and they expect to be dealing damage to turrets, so they want that dem demolish proc. The problem is that it deals so little, such little damage on a ranged support that it just doesn't do much. They're just forcing in on everything. If enemy team's going to be this aggressive, you want to just accept, weather the storm, back off, give them a little bit of space. It's going to take them more mental energy and physical energy to attack, right? Attacking historically across the world in every, in every avenue that you have harder than defending. Defending, you can say, all right, we defend here. You're going to have to put too many resources to do this safely. We can defend with the minimum amount of people and go get advantages on the other side. This is just nonstop action. They're going forward at all moments. You have to be careful if you're Ziggs here. They do get one back for themselves. Best answer is going to be a counter answer. You don't do not need to match. You just need to do something on the other side of the map. Here's that demolish again. So the idea again, right? We want access. We want to snowball as hard as possible. We're going to do that more. Wow, they're taking aggro even here with just two v one. Look at them juggling the aggro here. Only taking two turret shots despite getting four hits into into rel. They're going to wait until the turret aggro jumps on. All right, that's the dead dead rel. Look at that. Beautiful juggling aggro. If you guys want a masterclass on how to juggle, that was it. Callista, the best champion in the game at doing it. Uh, you can basically wait till the turret has taken its shot on something else. And as Callista, you hit them and jump back. And then the turret will hit whatever it hit. Then it will see that its champion got hit. And it will say, who hit it? Oh, it's Callista. Let me look for... Nope, she's out of range. And it won't do it. So you actually buy a lot of time with this champion. It is why this champion is pro skewed, because you can take so much with her that people just don't know and understand how to do in lower in lower levels. You need to have communication. You need to have an ex exemplary level of skill, and uh, and that's why this champion is always going to be in pro jail. See if Mbessa does the same thing, having dashes on all of her abilities. She'll probably be able to do a similar thing. Throw a spell, dodge out of the way. Come back, throw a spell, dodge out of the way. 
All right, what are you going to do on the other side of the map? You're putting all this effort in. You've got a Maokai teleport and a lease. He did come in, though, and he got a play for himself. Rest, what's the rest of the team doing? Is this going to turn into an invade? Probably not. It looks like they're spam pinging top lane. They want to take this fight. Jax is saying no. Yeah, this would be the answer, right? Maokai just teleported in Elise's bot side, so they are weak here. Jun instead decides to continue continue killing the scuttle which does give a speed boost to his team to come in but they're just too late and now and now you end up with a split call right that was a split call Finn spent some amount of time on jack's recalling it didn't look like they were on the move quickly enough which means that weibo's tempo may have gotten the best of the of the billy billy psyche this game all right 11 minutes in we've got the majority of trinity force being stacked i expect to put zigs in the mid lane from here on out he's way too susceptible to this team that is seemingly an adjustment they didn't make in time or they said hey no it's fine if you go get plates we can go get more but the last couple iterations have been weibo gaming favored how are they going to continue for the rest of for the rest of the game looks like a landry's bot even on a lease i think landry's might be good enough it's bought first item on like everyone who can possibly touch it That's an interesting play by Maokai. See what he did there? He knocked the cannon out of out of range so that the aggro would take on the caster. I don't think it's worth it at all. Right? Because you're putting that spell on cooldown. It just feels really weird. Like, yeah, it makes the casters die a little bit faster, but that's an extra spell that you just don't have to peel for yourself. All right, turrets trade. List is enormous right now. Renata, enormous. They're going to play through this point of strength. That is what they want. Absolutely. Syndra is going to be massive, though. Right, 52 stacks already. Next break point is at 60. Ziggs is going to be super comfortable in Lucian. Outranges him completely. Outpushes him completely. And if Lucian wants to put any threat on the wave, he immediately and necessarily loses his threat on the Ziggs. All right, there's one more outer turret. I expect Callista to go over to this side, and then they're going to focus their forces on the mid lane. They're probably not going to be in position to get many plates, but notice that BLG, at all times, they've kept the five plates here. Keeping this mid lane turret is the key to holding on to this game, because even if you lose each of these, your team still has a good shape, and most of your map is still unassailable, right? I love what Azale's talking about. Drafting not on meta, but drafting drafting what is good for you, right? You, The meta picks, there's very, it's very rare that there's more than one or like one small group of champions that you say we take this above everything. If we can take what's best for us and make our team comp work together, that is always going to trump a singular power pick because this is stronger than this and weibo right now is showing it they're going with team everywhere elise is joining the team there's very little time spent farming in the jungle and and it's just constantly making plays right and they're going side to side whichever point of strength the fact that they got this turret that's an extra thousand gold guys that is a significant chunk of damage that might mean that we get two item spikes as early as 18 minutes in this game maybe even earlier because of the amount of kills in the pocket of this Callista, and they are going to look to spread this billy billy getting this one dragon means that they are going to survive a lot longer into the end game we're talking about a 19 minute spawn dragon so then we've got like a 24 and a half for this is d2 this is d3 and then we're looking at 30 minutes essentially for d4 and by 30 minutes, we're looking at three items across the board. That one dragon and the fact that they spent as much effort on, on turrets and kills means that there's no real soul win condition for this game because the soul will coincide with the spikes from, from Billy Billy. So they're happy to continue scaling into this game. That said, are they going to be able to? You're going to have to plug Ziggs plus a protector into this mid lane, and he's going to constantly spray. You notice that they have flank wards down 
and that they have a deep ward a ward just in the middle of the lane saying i want to see you if you move up into our way big difference one spotted one was not and that's because this one was down first so even though they try to drop wards out of vision so that the enemy team can't mark them uh if the enemy team already has a ward there they're gonna see it Alkai saving some of these resources for the Callista. They're trying to get Callista as big as possible. This is a key, right? Multiplicative advantages. Anytime you can, you want to multiply. It's your items, your level. These things together. The more you have in one position means that you have more likely the strongest person in a fight, meaning that you'll be able to win more fights. What are the avenues? What are they? What are they going to do? Hold on, Crisp stepping up in front of this. It's kind of kind of wild that he stepped up here. This is a Crisp special, right? A little bit of misinformation. Malkai probably just showed up here. Lucian was coming out in fog. The fact that the team was in fog meant Renata felt comfortable going into this area, and you can actually read your opponents. What do they do? Do they collapse on you, or do they scale back? And if they umbrella backwards, then you can be confident that they're not confident in attacking you, right? And that's sort of like, again, this game theory optimal, the idea of like stealing blinds. You can make aggressive plays that have very little downside with better information. This is like having range information. Like if you're, if you're the dealer, you have a certain amount of information about everyone who acted before you. If you bet early from under the gun, then you know that the team, like ever, or the team, the table, expects you to have a certain range of cards right jack jack king ace or better right like ace queen maybe it's the worst hand you'd ever play so for the rest of the hand they can expect that to be the case right they expect you to play with that information that's exactly what chris just did he moved into this spot you would deny a little bit of information any amount of people on your team in fog you step into a contested area and you see how your opponents react it's like betting into the blinds. This time you just scoop them up. You say, okay, they were feeling not confident. What does that mean? What information can we derive? Can we figure out their range? Where are their champions? If I don't see everybody, but I see them stepping back, then I might make a, a call based on that. I might say, hey, they're ballooning outwards. That means that they're not set up yet. We can go even further. Or they're definitely not set up here. We can hold this and play for mid prio because they're not ready. If they're, not, if they're not ready to defend me walking into this corridor, then they're definitely not ready to stop a mid-push. So expect Weibo to focus more attention into this area. They're going to move into the Dragon area. 43 seconds left. You can expect one more wave to push up in mid. And you can see them try to get this area of control for themselves. Syndra, not really even looking for anything. I don't think you even look for the pick. Uh, you do have Ziggs that I'd like to see them get into a side lane, but mostly it looks like he's just on wave clear duty. Syndra is moving back through the fog, right, on this side. This parallel, this is their line. They can't go further. Weibo owns everything, and in a moment, they're going to own even more, and it looks like they're even going to contest for the, for the blue. Syndra, though. Sometimes you make a call, you don't forget about all of the elements, or you don't remember all of the elements. You can't contest a buff take against the Syndra if they have any amount of vision. But what they do say, okay, we've moved you out. You got your blue. Small victory for you. At least we made you, we tested you to see if you could have it. We'll go get pick up the dragon. Do it again. 19, 24, 29. Uh, he's still got hex flash so it's not that big of a deal uh, it does mean that rift Herald's going to get dropped immediately and they actually might feel pretty comfortable going with the rest of this fight because normally you see pro teams they don't want to go for this but with maokai they often do because maokai can scoop so many of the players meaning that it's that much harder to catch the person as they're vaulting out right that's the window that they use in pro as soon as you collide the champion jumping out is when they try to get up you know if it's a poppy steadfast presence then it's easy but any other effects that can hold people in place or just collapse on the landing spot <clears throat> now blg they worked super hard to make sure that this turret 
only took that much damage right that's basically a rift herald and a few and a few other pokes have touched this turret nothing else has touched it they are keeping this turret because once this falls then this will fall as well this early game team will be able to basically take the entire map and hold you into your base if this turret falls because this one does not cover any amount of the travel through the jungles this is the one that matters above everything expect blg to continuously uh, stick their mages into this lane and deny the enemy team from ever getting access to this mid lane. Alright, 1k gold lead. Not nearly enough to ferry into the endgame. The Baron is up. BLG might say, next dragon, we can flip it, no big deal. Uh, sorry, flip it. You take dragon, we'll take Baron, not flip it like fight it. Excuse me. Weibo needs to strap in and say nope we're, we're gonna make it about baron right now we're stronger now we're we've got early game champions and we're on our spikes and remember we talked about this spike this is two items and a hex drinker now by 21 minutes <clears throat> every single one of these champions deals magic damage this hex drinker is going to be an exceptionally high value purchase we'll see if they can go in any further avenues i wonder if we're going to see a Bissell mask from the maokai next or whether or not he'll stick to something like locket Looks like it's going to be Fimble Winter next, and he's using that to make sure that he's as healthy as possible in the beginning of these fights. It's going to be his job to soak up some of this damage, especially from the mages. Point any amount of the cooldowns to you. Do they find an angle? Oh my goodness. And throws him over the wall with that ult. What a beautiful play by Shun. I'm sorry that I ever suggested that uh, Tarzan was easily better than you. That was, he's played some magnificent games on Skarner, guys. This is wild. Now check this out. Skarner right here, not going for Frozen Heart. It looks like he's going for Randuin's. <clears throat> which you might expect into a double AD team. But this is not crit. This is not crit. Okay, like these... You are going to see Essence Reaver picked up and eventually Infinity Edge from Lucian, but this Randuin's Omen isn't going to have as much value as you might expect it to have if it were, for example, a Tristana and a Zaya. Alright, BLG in a very comfortable position to scale into the game. They do not need to take any fight. They've got plenty of tank action, plus mage action. So there, there is really no way for Weibo to assail an objective. You can't do it. Against against two mages, three tanks, just can't be done. So it, it's going to be a matter of stepping forward, see if you can get some space. If the coaching staff from BLG made the adjustments and warned Bin that, hey, the call for them is to just turn around and try to exploit your flanks, then he just gets to be a little bit more patient or he gets to play a little bit more in the split push. And this team is built for a 4-1, right? Like these four can easily control space. Skarner, Rel, more than capable of buying space for the mages. You're going to expect to see these four champions moving a lot. Syndra will go up and collect waves, push them out to halfway, but you don't expect her to go any further than this. Jax is going to be very comfortable to step forward because they need to send two. There's no one on that team that is going to be willing and able to, to brawl you on the, on the Jax. The question is going to be, at what point does, does Jax deal enough damage to Maokai to stop it? Right now, with Sunfire and Maokai's wave clear, they're just pretty, they're chilling. Maokai is going to be able to take these waves, push them back. Maokai is one of the best wave clears at the tank position, alongside with champions like Orn, right? They can get these waves in quickly, and good for them, right? Maokai, you see him pushing off, consistently pinning Jax to this side of the map, and saying, I dare you to try to go any further, right? I'm just going to hold this wave, keep you pinned here. And as long as Jax, who's by himself, gets pinned to this side of the map, then he's not going to go in and take all the extra camps. He's not going to do anything else. The team feels like they play; they have to play this 4-1, but the 4 can't step forward because of the risk of Maokai coming in on a flank. And Jax can't get anything done because he's pinned to his side. So this is actually beautiful done, beautifully done by Weibo. And Breathe showing... An, 
expertise at the highest level of macro. Hold on, we see our avenues. Sinja's already teleporting. They had a ward that saw this. That's the only way out. Jun uses E to get through walls and flashes over, saying, all right, you're not going to get this engaged. But now Sinja teleport's gone. Skarner flash is gone. We're going to use this momentum to go after this Baron. They're playing for the fight right now. I don't know if I like Bin's teleport here. It might have been a give angle, but hold on. They say it's Syndra spraying over the wall. Can they get enough done? This is super scary. Beautifully played by Weibo. They get at this. Light is kiting backwards, but they do get the kill down. Jun goes down. All right, Tarzan's going to try to kite on the other side. It is Elise, so once her cooldowns are back up, she'll be more than capable. BLG is able to get the fight. What marvelous defense from them, because that was so well done by Weibo to get themselves about the best situation you could ever hope for. No way. Did he buy enough time? Is it, is Yahoo going to come up and clean up this fight? He has the Essence Reaver plus the Zeal here. He just flashed, but he got stunned. All right, so he gets one back, but he's going to pop the Syndra Storm Surge damage. So much coming into the into the tournament was a discussion on whether or not Syndra would be the, the pick all championship long, right? Just the amount of resources that she has she feels very strong she scales in and she's she's completely capable beautifully done i mean all that aoe damage you talk about mages and pits that's why they take it they take it because they're confident that even with two resources down teleport's not going to matter skarner's still going to be able to hold space without caring about his flash uh and they do come in so they make that call that's tough to make in that moment but they know they have their game plan I want to I want to see the the turn there because Yahoo it looked like it looks like he got hit even though he flashed it was close though very very close imagine that if he had like that one of those faker moments where he just outplays the three of them all right beautiful AOE team fighting survives which means that he goes down if Callista gets that kill they get the reset and they continue that fight they might even be able to carry it but blg looking super super strong again all right can they hold this fight can they regain their lines now that the tanks are gone skarner is about to bite the dust but all this damage into the tanks means that they don't have it on the other side scatter the weak at max range and then the wherewithal by bin to realize that i have time to ward hop jump in and get exactly enough damage to follow that up to get that kill beautifully done these guys are playing so good. BLG. I mean, we, we said it last year that BLG is capable of the highest level of League of Legends that we've ever seen. Even higher than Gen.G. And that's only because Gen.G still has some exploitable tendencies, right? That are good over time. They make steady plays over time. But we haven't seen teams that are willing to bait Chovy, essentially. Is, and that's the way that we saw them losing in the finals against HLE. Just teams that are willing to take it to them and say, Chovy, what are you going to do once you're once you're put behind? But look at this. They stay alive. On stays alive. Was it the Crypt Bloom heal that kept him up? That's wild. Ben's ripping apart the Maokai on the other side, but Maokai does get in. Desperately trying to get into the rest of the fight. Ends up throwing that Q backwards to try to deal some damage to the Skarner as well. I don't think the total amount of damage was going to matter anymore, but him going in coincided with Lucian moving back. That's something that you'd like to try to get fixed. If Maokai is going in, you want everyone to deal damage in that moment. Go in together, see what you can do. You're working in between Syndra's cooldowns. There's a little bit more of a window there. Second time that we've seen Jahu on Lucian stepping back when the team's stepping forward. Is that indicative of, of something that's going to happen for the whole series? I don't know. Uh, we're not going to overcommit here. Sin just going to hold this wall. She can still throw. Skarner holds all this territory for himself. The tank itemization is just so incredibly efficient. This patch. That these team fight tanks are just so strong. Especially from the jungle position. Skarner and Sejuani being able to play off of minimal amounts of income. Can do so much. Redemption summoned up to try to keep him topped off a little bit. 
bit better as Breeze wraps around the backside of the look, look at this. It's Locket, Randwins, Locket, Redemption. All of these accessible tools to make every champ feel great. This is the best I've felt about the game. What do you guys think? Hashtag Riot, please, if you have something that you want Riot to add. But I feel like this game, better map, better items. It feels like the best version of League of Legends that we've ever had the ability to play. So I'm pretty excited about it. All right, let's check this out. They're holding. Maokai does not care, by the way. He's stacking his passive faster than the dragon. Even Cloud Dragon, who has the highest DPS in the game, it's just not consequential. Breathe is able to stay at these at these high totals with the Fimble Winter in particular. They do find the avenue. They push him into the back where Bin was waiting to go for it. They get that kill. Bin actually burns his flash there, so he might see an avenue to go back. Hold on. Light's saying, let's go forward. Let's fight this. No matter what, we take it to them. This is what you need to do. All out aggression. There you go. They find it. Light saying, I'm going to play this limit. Now, they lost vision in here in the pit. Now, he's not going to be able to get the, enough of a gap there. That one misstep. You need to get that vision in the bush somehow to be able to survive that fight. Make sure that there's not a single misstep forward. <sighs> Exciting game. <laughs> Crazy. All right, double teleports. I actually don't like double TP here. You should have saved the, seven, the second one to be in range. It does mean that you keep the melee... the minions alive longer but it's a little bit less damage to the turret but in this case it's not going to matter Maokai's going to come up he's going to int for this cannon he's going to try as hard as he can to kill this wave and try to go into into downsides but you have zigs on the other side that just rips through them too quickly beautifully done by blg they're playing so good they're playing so good i'll see you guys in game three